Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. It is looking rather white outside today. I'm gonna show you a little bit around and um, talk a little bit about what we're gonna do today. So let's just look out at the garden. As many of you probably experienced, we got quite a bit of snow overnight last night. And so we're under, I don't know, maybe about 10 inches, something like that, maybe eight inches, could be. It's enough to make a pretty serious impact. So I've come out and I've just shoveled a little bit of path through uh, the deck here. And I've been wanting to start some additional seeds this weekend, but unable to do that until I actually can move some out to my mini greenhouse here on the deck. So, Unfortunately though, I have a whole bunch of stuff in this greenhouse. So we're gonna have to clean that out today. So, for those of you who don't know me or have recently joined the channel, my name is Soleil and I garden in a zone 5B in mid Michigan. And today what we're gonna do is clean out the greenhouse and then hopefully we can get some violas and pansies that I've been growing inside out here into this little greenhouse so that they can continue to grow on and I can make some space indoors. So let's get started on the clean out. So I got this greenhouse from Gardner's Supply Company and actually it's more like a cold frame because uh, greenhouses often have heating in them and this does not. But it is situated on the south side of my house so that means it gets a ton of sun and is nice and warm and my house is brick so that makes a really big difference at night because the heat from the bricks that it is up against actually helps to release um, heat overnight so that the plants can continue to receive warmth. So even when it gets down to freezing, they shouldn't freeze. Cold, hardy things like violets and pansies though that we're talking about putting in here should be able to take some of those colder temperatures but definitely not when they initially are put out. In addition, this really helps with hardening off seedlings because they get a little bit of shade from this outer layer of plastic material that helps to filter the sun so they don't get burnt when um, you're waiting for them to really adapt to the brighter outdoor light. And I have just been sticking things in here, you guys, uh, at the end of the season. So I have a whole lot of gloves and this was a great place for me to put them, take them off and put my secateurs and clippers and things like that as I was heading inside. So I'll have to transfer all of these over to the glove bin that I have in my garage. I was wondering where all my gloves were when I looked in the garage the other day and here they all are. And before I put those gloves back in the garage though, I'm going to make sure that they have matches and I'm going to make sure like, you know, that they have a right hand and a left hand and I'm going to make sure that they don't have any holes in them or anything like that so that I can figure out if I need any more for the upcoming gardening season. Like I've also got some old plant trays in here. Take those indoors. And inside this are basically wooden shelves. But what I've done is grab some of these drain trays from the dollar store just to help with any of the dripping of plants as needed. It does block some of the sunlight a little bit more between the different shelves, but because this is south facing, I really haven't had any problems with it. So just a little tip, because the wooden slats that come with this veg truck cold frame it are um, slotted, so they don't cover the whole bottom of it. Some of this stuff is just trash, you guys, that I haven't cleaned up. And pool supplies like goggles. <laughs> I 
Oh, I want to save this plant tag. This is from one of my plants. For now, I am going to keep my secateurs up in here. And I think I'm going to keep two pairs of gloves because I really have appreciated how handy this spot is. So we'll put an insulated pair in here and this pair looks pretty old. So we're going to get rid of those. I want to put a non-insulated pair in here as well. Those look really ratty. It's really good to get rid of your gloves once the kind of rubber lining starts to break down on the outside because it will let all of the moisture through. So I don't really think I want to keep any of the non-lined gloves out here anymore. So we're just going to get rid of all of those. And we'll put the rest of the lined gloves back into the garage. And we have some insecticidal soap out here. It might not be good after a winter outside. I've been keeping all my pot toes in here as well. So we'll put those up on the same spot where I have my gloves. Any pot toes that are not in use. We'll take these plant trays out. Little base here, we'll take that inside. bonsai pot here. I'm actually going to keep this out here and I'll just put the pot toes inside of it. All right, let's take a look at the inside here. So here's what we've got. We've got a couple of trays up here with the gloves and secateurs and some tie backs that I can reuse. For plants and then as you can see I've got quite a few of the slats on this rack so I think I'm gonna take one of those out that should be on the top rack and then another one of these should come out and go on the bottom rack there's supposed to be four of them on each rack I'm just gonna shake the boards off too and get rid of some of the uh, soil that's in there Start off nice and clean if we can. So there's essentially four shelves to this. The bottom shelf though um, is definitely better for like shade plants and because the heat rises I definitely don't want to put anything down there right now because it is so cold outside. drafts can come up from below but that's also part of why I added these drain trays so that it can help with any drafts slow down the cold air I'm actually gonna put the gloves down on the bottom just because of that reason that way we can put everything up on the top that we're going to use. Oh, I'm getting dripped in <laughs> to plant the pansies. And I've been keeping some of the shrubs that I got. You guys remember the ones that I got from Hertz Gardens. I've been keeping some of those in here as well. And now it's gotten to the point though, where I'm just going to keep them outside because uh, the temperatures are at least in the 20s and 30s, so that works out really well. All right, let me grab my pansies and show you what we have. Now, 
Now before you say, oh my gosh, so they, you have snow on the ground and you're putting those into a cold frame outside. Yes, I do, but it's gonna be in the mid 40s today and all of this snow is gonna melt <laughs> even though we got it all in uh, about 10 hours overnight. So these should be just fine. I'm gonna put this um, flap back down and it will start to warm up and keep humid in here. The thing about cold frames is you do have to check them and make sure that they don't get too hot. Now, because it's gonna be in the mid 40s today, I am not going to zip the sides. I wanna make sure that there's plenty of airflow in there because it actually could get too hot. And there are a couple of vents on both sides over here. So we'll just keep those open as well. If I want to secure them, I just put them over the top and Velcro them down. But right now I've just got them tucked in so that the airflow can come in through the side. And I definitely am going to have to up pot some of these. They have already started getting, you know, too big for these, but that's okay. I've got lots of empty pots and I just got some more potting soil. So we'll be doing that as well soon. All right, let's put the flat back down. So that should do it for these for right now. And I wanna get some other seeds started. So let's go do that. Well guys, I'm not having the best day with this video. I have to admit, I uh, was coming back inside to pot up some new things and do some new seedling with you. And I found some allium bulbs that I hadn't planted in the shed when I was putting things away on my way back inside. And so I figured I would just film that with you, but apparently I forgot to press the record button. So I apologize for that, um, but I'm showing you what I have left. These are the um, drumstick alliums and they look like nothing right now, but they're really cute and they actually have just been in my shed for the last five months and I had set them down when I was getting something else and totally forgot to grab them again. So. They are padded up and we'll watch those for some growth over the next couple of weeks and hopefully then the ground will be a little less frozen and we'll be able to get them out. I'll just give you an update too on my plant room here and what we have going on with seedlings growing. We have a lot more of the violas growing back down in here. We have some maverick pink geranium as well as some Cambridge blue lobelia that I seeded last week. And this I heavily seeded, but I will break this out and uh, in clumps and we'll plant it up in larger pots as it grows on. And then over here we have some bunny tail grass, which is doing really well. So I'm excited for that. I grew that a couple of years ago and I had a hard time finding the seed last year, but I found some this year. So we'll be growing that on. It's a really fun one to grow in pots, I think. And then in front of those, we have the Pretoria cannas that continue to grow on really well. You can see we're getting some nice new leaves on these plants and they seem to be happy enough here, but also just growing slow enough. And um, those should be ready for, for going outside when the summer comes around and it will someday. Over here, I decided to buy some additional primroses just for some spring color. So we have some yellow and some pink and a Delft blue hyacinth down here that smells really wonderful. I also have some additional brush strokes violas over here. And, you know, please just ignore the sticky traps with the fungus gnats on them. I continue to get them and it's just a battle that I fight pretty much every year because I'm too lazy to sterilize my soil when I get it, I think. Um, back here, I have the geraniums that we sowed. This is the Maverick Violet Geranium and the Maverick Pink Geranium. They're gonna be absolutely gorgeous. I just potted them up and they seem really happy. They're putting on some of those beautiful rings of color that the geraniums get. And then we have the Secret Garden Mix Ranunculus also in here. These are a larger pot. If you recall, we pre-sprouted the ranunculus in one single pot. 
and now I've broken them out so each one has their own pot so they can grow additional roots and they're starting to poke through which is really exciting to see. They seem really easy to grow. This is the first time I've ever grown ranunculus. So we'll see if they overwinter well for me because I'll try to keep the corms over the winter. And if they do, it might become a regular thing for me using because they look like they'd be very beautiful in containers. Over here on this plant shelf, I have my snapdragons, which if you recall, we struggled a little bit with the germination rate on this particular variety that I've not grown before. These are both the Potomac uh, variety and I have the, um, this one is the Potomac orange and then this one is the Potomac pink royal. And you can see I've pinched them back so that we are starting to get some branching on those and have some really nice strong growth. Up here we have some additional geraniums that I potted together into this cute pot so they will have plenty of space to grow on here. And I seeded some Lancinato dinosaur kale and this I'm hoping to get out into the veggie garden maybe within the next couple of weeks if uh, we can get the raised bed to be unfrozen that would be great. And then next to that, I have this cute little pot of the Viola wine Laetta. And then I also had tried to germinate a seed from my summer, what is it called? Evening rose hibiscus. And the evening rose hibiscus seed uh, I collected from mine. And so this one actually germinated. I had it between some paper towels and a baggie. So I've potted it up and we'll see how that grows. Also on this shelf, I have some baby seedlings. Hopefully you can see them. They are from my Rose Valley Pieris. I collected those. That is a small evergreen shrub that has beautiful rose colored flowers and they are buds throughout the winter and then they open in very early spring. So I'm excited that they germinated and that they're growing. I've been growing them for almost a month now so they're very slow to germinate and very small seedlings. Finally over here in terms of an update we have our red lion amaryllis are actually finishing up right now. They have been beautiful but I am also getting a new bud on this one so we'll see what color that one turns out to be. And then up over behind this red lion, we have a brand new flower, which is going to be a creamy white amaryllis. I think this one's going to be, it looks like it might be kind of double. I don't know, but it looks beautiful. I don't know what variety it is. So yeah, it's been really fun to grow these beauties indoors over the winter this year and have some gorgeous things to look at. So despite there being snow out, it actually feels really, really great. The sun is just shining and everything is melting and I am really enjoying the day. I don't even have a coat on today. So I thought what we would do is go around and kind of take out some of the evergreens that are in the containers around the garden because to me at this point, I don't really want to look at evergreen anymore. <laughs> I want to get these containers ready for their new growth within the next month so that we can start seeing what we've got. Well, I don't know if you all have Costco where you live, but we do. And so I picked up a 10 pack of these gloves. So these will be coming in really handy dandy since I have just gotten rid of a whole bunch of holy ones and really didn't have any good ones left over. Um, now I'm just gonna kind of cut back some of the things in this container. We had some snapdragons and some penstemon, different things in here. And that'll just help to tidy it up. I already took the evergreens out of this particular one. Now what I'm gonna do for right now is just leave the clippings in because there are lots of seeds in that. And if they self seed in these containers, that would be fabulous. So you can see this is a uh, Black Prince snapdragon that I planted in here. It's got lots of seed heads on it and it may come back uh, perennialize. It can. It does actually have what appears to be live growth. 
quite a few different spots. This one has so much on it though, I'm not going to leave it in, but what I'm gonna do is just kinda take some of the dried seed heads and put them down in here so that hopefully we get some coming up. And if there's too many, because each seed head does make a lot of seeds, if you've ever collected these from Snapdragons before, I can always thin them out and take them out. But hopefully we'll get some free babies in here. Maybe in both of the pots. Now in these containers I've planted some Wygela, which is great. Hopefully they will come back. They are hardy down to zone four. I wasn't sure if they would come back because we are zone five and so it's better to plant things that are hardy to zone three in containers if you're going to overwinter them here. But um, we've had a very mild winter so I think there's a decent chance that these are going to come back. Some of the snow is still frozen. I might not be able to get these out of these pots. Or the soil is still frozen, excuse me, not the snow. We'll get what we can right now. Come back later when it unfreezes some more for the rest. I think that's what we can get out of this one. Let's see if they'll come out of this pot. This pot had petunias in it last year and I can see the seed heads on it. I'm just going to dump those into the pot again in the hopes that we get some free ones back this year and if we don't see anything growing we'll plant it up with something else. I think these are pretty frozen in this pot. Yep, I'm not gonna rustle these out. Let's see if we have any better luck with these pots. My guess is because they're in full sun and they're dark color that we'll be able to get these things out. Feels like it's still a bit frozen for quite a few of these. So we'll leave those in. I don't mind doing projects, you know, just like small parts at a time, what I can do at the time that I can do it. Some people like to do one thing and get it all done, but I don't know. I just don't mind. It's, it's fun to just do whatever it is that I can when I can get to it and when I'm enjoying it. Oops. I do not want to step in this garden bed too much. If I can avoid it. So we have rhubarb that hopefully has overwintered in this pot. It feels like a lot of these branches are still stuck in this galvanized container. So I'm not going to try to get at them for now. 
I mean, we've got this whole big pile over here that I was already able to pull out that I wouldn't have if I didn't even do it, and it just took a few minutes. All right, the last thing we're going to do today is try to tackle this clematis, also referred to by some people as clematis. Uh, I call it different things depending on the day. So this one is a toile de violette and it is a very prolific bloomer. So what I need to do though is I need to really cut it back pretty hard. So I'm going to go back down, otherwise we'll end up with just flowers just at the top. So I'm going to cut it down all the way to this initial set of branches and what I'm going to do is just cut it right above a node and I'm going to do that on all of the branches and then the easy way to get these away from the trellis because they definitely twine and um, hold on to it because that's how they climb is I will take and keep clipping up as I go. So once I have these all unhinged from the bottom, which I do, I'm going to start clipping some of these up here so that it makes it easier to pull it through the trellis. Otherwise you can struggle with the vines for quite some time because they may not want to pull off unless they're completely dead. This will promote really nice, full, bushy growth this summer and more flowering lower on the trellis. By this time of year, you usually will see some of that new growth where the leaves are starting to poke out, at least in my zone, you will, which makes it easy to tell where those nodes are for cutting. And I will just leave all the little tiny debris that has fallen down here because it will just degrade into the soil and I will be mulching all of my beds this spring and that way I'll be covering it all up. But in the meantime, it can just go to compost in the soil. All right, thanks for joining me today. I hope you did enjoy the video and all of the random activities that I'm doing as I'm waiting for the snow to melt here. We'll see you next time. Bye.